Yo, 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 what's going on? Let me, let me focus a little bit. What's going on? It's the Juice Man Jabrelli. You already know who it is. Uh, shout out shout out to um, all of my subscribers, viewers right now. Um, I'm just grinding right now. You know, as you can see, just left the barber shop. I'm looking clean. You know what I'm saying? Crispy. Mm, crispy. And uh, today's video is all about uh, my New York Knicks. And it's all about... Uh, there's a couple things I want to run down, but our most the most important thing is our head coach Jeff Ornacek. Now, um, this has really been a topic in um in kind of our Knicks fan culture in a little bit. It's uh it's it's been about Jeff Ornacek, uh, the future. Does he have a future? And so, you know, this is coming from a guy who's been through. You know, I haven't do, been through a lot of agony like, you know, a lot of older Knicks fans, but what I can tell you is that I was through, I went through the Derek Fisher years. Um, you know, the coaches I've, I, I'll, I'll run down the coaches that, um, I've seen since I've been a Knicks fan. Let's see. So, I mean, well, since I've really been watching basketball, I remember the years, um, I forgot the, who the coach was, uh, before Mike D'Antoni. I think it was, um, I'm trying to remember. I, I think it could have been, um, I don't know. I I, I got to look at... I, was it Isaiah? Was it Isaiah Thomas? I'm not really sure. I think... No, Isaiah Thomas was like the GM president. He was never the coach. But all I know is like we had those great D'Antoni years in which we had like Lynn Sanity. And let me see if I can get in the frame though. Let me get in the frame. Oh, whoa, whoa! All right, we're just going to have to do it like that. I just have to, I have to center myself, you know? But I remember we went through the years of Mike D'Antoni. Um, we went through the years of uh, Mike Woodson. Not like Mike uh, Mike D'Antoni left because they wanted he wanted Melo trade him, and so we we got Mike Woodson. He was the intern for a little bit, and you know the era the Mike Woodson era kind of ended when we were like nine seed, I think. Um, but you know then it was Mike Woodson. Then went to Derek Fisher. That was like the first coach of the Derek uh, of the Phil Jackson era. And then we went to Jeff Hornacek, who, who I've been a fan of. I I saw his work in Phoenix when he had Bledsoe, and he had like he was a he was a guard heavy team, and he had those guys grinding and working hard in that Western Conference, and they won 41, 44 games. They, they didn't make the playoffs; they're like the ninth seed in the West. But I was really impressed, and I felt like he had a bright future. Plus, as a player, he knew like he was a guy who you know he had like a Steve Kerr role on a great team. He was uh, he was a player for the Utah Jazz. I remember one of the teams he played for was Utah Jazz with John Stockton and McCarl Malone, and um, he was a guy who's a catch and shoot, drain him. He would drain him. He was a catch and shoot guy. So he knows about he knows about role players and how to get the best out of them. Um, but you know, like I said, this video is all about well, is Jeff Hornacek should Jeff Hornacek stay, or should we um, kind of move on? And honestly, my answer to that is I think we should move on. Um, I think Jeff Hornacek is a good coach, just in the wrong position. I think this this coaches that are, in, this coaches in this league that are made for positions like such as um, teams that are buying, teams that are contending. Yeah, I'm going through that NBA. If you are, if you play my gem on NBA, you kind of know what I'm talking about. And NBA 2K, you know what I'm talking about. So I mean, there's coaches that like um, you know that are right for a buying situation. There are coaches that are right for a uh, selling situation. There's Coach is ripe for a rebuilding situation, and I think I'm so buying, selling, rebuilding, and uh, I'm trying to think what would be the other one. The buying, selling, rebuilding, and I'm thinking the other one would be contending. So there's coaches made for all four positions. Um, there, and I'll, I'll go through them quickly. I'll, I'll even go into in depth in an, in another video. So keep subscribing. I uh, tell your friends to subscribe. Tell your girlfriends to subscribe. Cause you know I got that curl sponge on, so I might steal your girl. All right. So anyway, <laughs> now, nah, but seriously, um, a coach that's good with a rebuilding team. He's good with incorporating new additions and, and developing chemistry. Um, a coach that's great, I'll go more in depth in another video, but a coach that's great, you know, in a buying situation is like a guy like a Doc Rivers who um, he knows he knows how to take a Los Angeles Clippers who have been such a uh, such a doormat in the league for a while and know how to really change the culture and, and turn them into a a, uh, a, a serious contender in that West for a couple of years. I'm um, a guy who's a good good at coaching a selling team is a guy who's going to get maximum effort out of guys who 
truly don't have the biggest futures or biggest potential um, on their team. Uh, a guy I could think of maybe like a Steve Clifford from Charlotte. But like I said before, I'll, I'll go in more into detail. And a guy who's a contending, great for a contending team. I mean, to be honest with you, um, a guy like a, you know Phil Jackson, who you give him the pieces and he'll he'll get the chip. Um, but um, you know Jeff Hornacek to me is a guy who. I think he's best for for a team that's selling. A team we're not selling though, we're rebuilding. So uh, the, the difference between a team that's selling and a team that's rebuilding is Orlando Magic are selling. They traded Alfred Payton. They're gone with the Alfred Payton um, uh, era. They're also done with the. Uh, 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 with, what it looks like is that they're done also with Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon, who uh, a lot of people thought was going to be nice. They first of all, Orlando. We can go into detail with this, but like the Orlando Magic. Or selling franchise because they're thinking about selling, uh, firing Frank Vogel. Um, they're thinking about trading. Um, they they traded Alfred Payton already, so they're looking for a new point guard. And then you know Aaron Gordon to me has been on the trade block for a while, so they're trying to clear space. They're trying to re restart and restart or just sell things and get get draft picks and just branch out. And then they'll get to the rebuilding stage once they get those draft picks in. And I think Jeff Warren says right for that situation. Our situation, we're a rebuilding team. We're a team that, quite honestly, you know, the New York Knicks, we're a team where Porzingis Persing, is our star player, and it's all about growth with him. And, you know, we got a guy, we drafted a point guard on Frank Nilakina, who I still think is going to be nice. He's, you know, he's kind of started slow. But listen, not everybody who starts slow is going to be a bust. That's something you got to understand. In this current culture, a guy like Markel Fultz, everybody's saying he's a bust. Oh, he's a bust. He doesn't play enough. Da, da, da. You have to understand, he's 19, 20 years old. He barely played. I mean, he, I mean, he won nine games at Washington. He doesn't know how to win. But he can put that ball in the basket. And... It's just amazing how people can jump off the bandwagon. And I still think he should have been a number one pick, and I'm still glad I said that because guess what? He's still going to be nice. I'm on that Markel Fultz train. I mean, I'm on that. That kind of sounds weird, very sexual, but I'm on that Markel Fultz train. You know what I'm saying? I really believe in his potential. Listen, yeah, he's hurt. He got a bum shoulder. I don't know what is going on. It's very weird. But one thing I know is he can put that ball in the basket. I've seen tape on him. He's a nice guy. I think, to be honest with you, um, if you compare him and Lonzo, Maybe Lonzo has, you know, um, you know, maybe maybe a higher ceiling, maybe uh, if he made that jump shot can work. But you never know. I think Marco Fultz is going to be a perennial All Star. He just needs time to develop, and he just needs time. He needs to get healthy. I mean, when he was on the court, he was looking nice too. But everybody wants to jump and say he's a bust and all that. And another, uh, we'll get into that surely another video. But the point is of this video is that do we think? As a Knicks fan right here, I think we should, uh, at the end of the season, I think we should tell Jeff Warnsek, thank you. But um, we need to cut all ties with the triangle office. He's been running some triangle this season. But honestly, we should cut all all things with the, with the triangle. All things. I mean, we got to start fresh and new. We got Porzingis. He's going to be the catalyst for our franchise for the years to come. I, mean, I, like, I like Ennis Cantor. Um, if you can re-sign up for a nice, cheap contract, I don't know how, how much how that's going to be possible. Um, cause he's a, t I don't know. I, I like Ennis Kitter a lot, but I mean, we're not going to give him a max. <laughs> you think we're not giving Ennis Kitter a max. I mean, come on now, but I like Franklin Nilakina a lot. Um, a lot of Knicks fans now talk about, you know, we could draft Trey Young. Mm. Trey Young's nice. I wouldn't be mad if we got him, but I really like Frank. I really do like Frank. I really do like Frank. I mean, I think he has the potential to be Giannis point guard version. I mean, one thing I really like about him is his defense. You know, defense is all about effort. Sorry, I'm chewing gum. Didn't have time to spit it out. You know what I'm saying? Just going to do with it. But one thing I like about Frank is his defense. His ability to, I mean, I saw him against Kyrie Irving, and he was kind of giving Kyrie Irving fits. Uh, that defense, it's gonna only it's only getting better. It's only getting better. He's, I mean, once he really gets comfortable with his body, he gets, he, you know, fills out that jersey a little bit. I mean, he's going to be a defensive force. Plus, he can facilitate. He's not on Lonzo Ball's level yet. I mean, and, you know, and that's one of the lowest levels. I mean, Lonzo Ball can get better at that, too. I mean, he's already good at that. But, you know, obviously, Phil King's not at that level yet, but he still can facilitate. He's unselfish. Um, he can shoot a three. He's a decent at threes. Um, he's a decent shooter, very athletic. I mean, to me, to be honest with you, give him a couple years of development. He's he's the I think he's like the youngest player in the league. Playing in New York, pressure, being a top-ten pick. I mean... 
give him time. But, you know, Jeff Hornacek, one of the things that really frustrates me about Jeff Hornacek is that he has he gives Jared Jack minutes over Frank Milikina. Bro, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? We're tanking. Not necessarily tanking, but we're rebuilding. Porzingis is out. So what is what this season is all about? It's a wash. What we I don't care. Listen, I don't care if we win or lose at this point in time. But this season's a wash. This I could give a fuck about this season. Excuse my language. I could give a I could give a flying fuck about this season. I don't care about this season. I care about making sure our guys develop. And when you're playing Jared Jack minutes and you're playing Trey Burke all these damn minutes, like listen, I love Trey Burke. He could be a a, a, a nice you know role player for us in the future. I like I like Trey Burke. Don't get me wrong. He's been balling too. He's really been balling. And then you got Emmanuel Boom Moutier off the trade. But listen, like Frank, listen, play Frank. Even if he's not ready, play Frank. Let him have those turnovers. Let him fuck up. Let him let him make mistakes. Let him make mistakes. That's the only way he's getting better. He's already in the league. You can't. I mean, you're gonna send. He's he's good enough. He's good enough not to play in the D League and, and, and G League. I'm not saying that people who play in the G Leagues are bums, but what I'm saying is like he's good enough to play in the. I mean, he's good enough to not play in the G League if you know what I mean. So give him minutes. And one thing Jeff Hornacek doesn't do is he doesn't he doesn't realize like listen, you're he's coaching. He's you can tell he's coaching for his job because he's playing Trey Burke major minutes. He's playing all these veterans major minutes. Uh, Trey Burke is mad young, but he's kind of a veteran now. But he's playing all these guys major minutes, and the thing is like. Bro, that's unnecessary. Listen, listen. The way to me, the way you would save your job is we see development from Frank. But we're not seeing true, you know, we're not seeing Frank have that potential. So my thing is like, yo, Jeff, you're not fit for the situation because if you're not playing Frank minutes, if you're not playing all these young guys, Damian Dawson minutes, if you're not playing all this and you're relying on Jared Jack, like, what's the point? I mean, listen, like. You gotta play guys that are gonna be building bucks for our future, and you're not doing that. So, quite honestly, forget about the wins loss record. You know what I'm saying? He took over a team that was in that was a mess. That was a mess. So I'm not worried about the wins and loss record, but I'm worried about the theory, the 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 method, bro. We're not good enough. We're not good enough to um, you know, the to be to get a playoff spot. So guess what? Play the young guys. If Frank gets 12 turnovers, he gets 12 turnovers. But he's growing. I'm sick and tired of, you know, wa- looking like look, watching the games, reading the box score and seeing Frank playing 12 minutes a game. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's not it's not what I want. I want to see Frank develop. I want to see, you know, you you know, Ennis Cantor is one playing like 20. That's fine. I mean, I don't want to wear out Ennis Cantor cuz he could be the next he could be the nice complimentary to uh Kristaps in the future, but he may not be. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not. We're not signing him to a max. That's a fact. I mean, uh, Scott Perry, Steve Mills, they they plan on signing him, uh, and it's catered to a max. We gotta have bigger conversations about the, the the direction of the New York Knicks. But quite honestly, I'm gonna end this video by saying this. I think it's time for Jeff Hornacek to go. Um, it, it was a good two years, three years. I think it was two years. Um, we gotta cut t- all ties with any triangle, any anything like that. Let's start fresh and new. Um, any Mark Jackson's always there. Like I said, well, I'll make another video about candidates who can coach the next. But I like Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson, maybe a Van Gun, Jeff Van Gundy. But I really like Mark Jackson. I mean, he developed that. He developed. He was the guy who kind of cropped and developed that Golden State run. I mean, he was the guy who gave Steph Curry the confidence to shoot and gave him tools to succeed because he was a great point guard back in the day too. And then Steve Kerr came in and kind of turned it on a whole nother level. But quite honestly, like. You know, Mark Jackson's a good candidate to lead. I mean, Frank, I really believe in Frank Nolakina. So, but, you know, I think it's time for Jeff Hornacek to go, and it's time for us to part ways and find a new coach. Uh, but that's going to be it for me. Um, hopefully, you you know, you subscribe. If you're not, please do. Comment what you think about um the Knicks. And uh, if Jeff Hornacek should stay, try and convince me. Uh, like, like the video. Uh, watch some of my previous videos. Uh, I reacted to Freaky Friday with Chris Brown and Lil Dicky. I woke up in Chris Brown's body. Um, reacted to Walk It Talk It. Um, I'm also debating uh, what color is my shirt on my channel. So just check it out. Uh, uh, let me know and um, we'll stay in touch. By the way, happy birthday to my mom yesterday, Friday, March. Um, wow. 23rd? Yeah, don't show this video to her. Um, but uh, yeah, fifty-seven years old. She she looking she looking like a snack.
and she's taken. So anyway, uh, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all later. All right, peace.